Greetings, dear subscribers and casual listeners of my channel. Why can Voldemort fly without a broom, and can other wizards do it too? This question was asked by one of my subscribers, and I realized that I hadn't really thought about it before. But now, I have. Indeed, the question regarding some wizard's abilities to fly without the help of a broom, thestrals, or an enchanted motorcycle or car is not new. However, to be honest, I never really focused on the fact that some wizards can fly while others cannot. Interestingly, in the film adaptations of the story about the boy who lived, we see quite a few examples of how Death Eaters move through the air without any support. We saw this in the Department of Mysteries in Order of the Phoenix and in Half-Blood Prince during the attack on the city and Diagon Alley. The problem is that all these examples are simply the invention of the film studio, and due to this free interpretation of the story, many fans mistakenly thought that being a Death Eater automatically gives a wizard the ability to fly. But, of course, this is not the case. I think no one will argue that all these inserts were made with one single goal, to make the appearance of the Death Eaters in the films as impressive as possible. Admit it. It really does look quite good. A beautiful dramatic wave of smoke, a ghostly trail behind. But the director of the Harry Potter films, apparently, didn't read the books and doesn't know that Death Eaters themselves can't fly. They only have the ability to apparate, as detailed in Goblet of Fire. So it turns out that the filmmakers, for the sake of a pretty picture, slightly embellished the way wizards can apparate and endowed this skill with the ability to fly. However, the fact that Death Eaters themselves can't fly doesn't mean that other wizards can't do it. And in the history of Harry Potter, there are two wizards who have this skill, Voldemort and Severus Snape. When J.K. Rowling was asked to comment on this point, she said that absolutely all wizards have these innate abilities for unsupported flight, but most of them need a broom or other means to be able to take off. If we talk about Voldemort, here we have an example of how a very talented wizard managed to direct his magical power and abilities within himself, and it was this that helped him rise into the air without a broom. Thus, ordinary wizards direct magical energy through a broom, and this is how they take off, while wizards with rare talent seem to channel this power through themselves and not through a broom, which helps them lift off the ground without the help of any additional means. Moreover, this is a very rare achievement and proof that we are indeed dealing with a very strong and powerful wizard. As for Snape, the proof that he also knows how to control the magical energy within himself, allowing him to fly, is the moment in Deathly Hallows when he left Hogwarts by flying out the window. McGonagall's words that, he learned these tricks from his master, show that this skill can be learned with a certain talent. So, what do we have? The ability to fly through the air is available to every wizard. However, like any skill that requires certain abilities and talents, this skill is available only to certain wizards capable of channeling their magical power and directing it to achieve flight. And just as young wizards master the technique of flying on a broom, an adult wizard needs to work hard to learn the skill of unsupported flight. Now that we've figured out why Voldemort can fly without a broom and whether other wizards can master this art, let's delve into even more amazing and little-known aspects of his personality and biography. Here are seven little-known facts about Voldemort that not all fans are aware of. 1. This was the name of a real person. When J.K. Rowling created her characters, she often drew inspiration from real life, including names. One of the most famous examples is the name Tom Riddle. In Edinburgh, where Rowling wrote her books, there is an old cemetery. On it you can find a gravestone with the name Tom Riddle. This coincidence is not accidental. J.K. Rowling often walked through this cemetery, seeking inspiration and finding it in the most unexpected places. Gravestones with names, dates, and epitaphs became sources for her characters. 
Tom Riddle became the name of one of the most sinister wizards. Besides Tom Riddle, Rowling also used other names from this cemetery. For example, there is a gravestone with the name William McGonagall. This name became the basis for Minerva McGonagall, the strict but fair teacher at Hogwarts. These real names added a special atmosphere and sense of authenticity to Rowling's books. Using real names adds depth and realism to the fictional world. It also creates a unique connection between the world of magic and our world. Readers who learn about this can feel even closer to the story. They understand that even the most fantastic characters have their roots in reality. Rowling does not hide that inspiration for her books often comes from real life. She mentioned this in interviews. Her walks around Edinburgh, meetings with people and reading old books all influenced the creation of the magical world. The name Tom Riddle became a symbol of this connection between reality and fantasy. Interestingly, the name Tom Riddle is not just a coincidence. It carries a certain symbolism. Tom Riddle, like many other characters, was associated with darkness and evil. But this name also reminds us that behind every villain is a person, with their own story, fears and weaknesses. In the Harry Potter books, the name Tom Riddle becomes a symbol of a double life. It is the name that an ordinary boy carried before turning into the most powerful dark wizard. This name reminds us that evil can come from anywhere, even from someone who started life as an ordinary child. Thus, a real name on a gravestone becomes part of a great story. It is a name that reminds us of the close connection between fiction and reality. A name that carries the story not only of a fictional character, but also of a real person. This makes Voldemort's story even darker and more captivating. Using real names also shows how brilliantly J.K. Rowling weaves reality into her fantasy. She takes something mundane and turns it into part of the magical world. The name Tom Riddle is a vivid example of this craftsmanship. 2. Voldemort could be a distant relative of Harry Potter. The magical world is tight-knit and surprising. It often reveals family connections that can astonish even the most dedicated fans. One such surprising connection is the possible kinship between Voldemort and Harry Potter. Yes, it sounds incredible, but in the magical world, anything is possible. The wizarding families of England are closely interwoven. Over centuries of marriages and alliances, most pure-blood wizards have become relatives. Families integrate into each other, creating complex genealogies. For example, Harry Potter was blood-related to his godfather, Sirius Black. Sirius Black, a member of the ancient and powerful Black family, was a direct descendant of the Peverells. The Peverells are the brothers who, according to legend, received the Deathly Hallows. Harry Potter is also a descendant of one of the Peverells, Ignotus, the owner of the Invisibility Cloak. Interestingly, another Peveril brother, Cadmus, is an ancestor of Voldemort. This means that Voldemort and Harry Potter indeed have common ancestors. Although their kinship is very distant, it still exists. They are cousins many generations removed. This connection highlights how closely knit and intertwined the magical world is. Even sworn enemies can be related by blood. This adds drama and complexity to their relationship. Voldemort, seeking to destroy Harry, is essentially pursuing his distant relative. Families play a huge role in the magical world. Genealogies are carefully studied and kept secret. Interestingly, even Voldemort, who sought to destroy all purebloods, was himself part of this world. He was proud of his heritage and being a descendant of Salazar Slytherin. The kinship with Sirius Black also makes Harry Potter's story even more tangled. Sirius, one of his parents' closest friends, was real family to Harry. Knowing that they are related only strengthens their bond and adds even more meaning to their relationship. These family ties underline the theme of fate and predestination that runs through the series. 
Harry and Voldemort are connected not only by prophecy, but also by blood. This makes their confrontation even more personal and tragic. Thus, the connection between Harry Potter and Voldemort is another example of how brilliantly J.K. Rowling weaves details into her story. She creates a complex and rich world where even the most incredible connections turn out to be true. 3. Voldemort created all the Inferi himself. The scene in The Half-Blood Prince is striking in its darkness and horror. Harry Potter and Albus Dumbledore go to a cave to find one of Voldemort's horcruxes. This cave, hidden from ordinary people's eyes, becomes the site of one of the series' most eerie encounters. Voldemort meticulously prepared this place. He created a protection that only the most powerful wizards could pass. At the centre of this protection is a lake filled with inferi. These creatures were once living people. Now they have become soulless puppets, obeying the Dark Lord's will. When Dumbledore began drinking the potion hiding the Horcrux, he gradually weakened. It was at this moment that the Inferi began rising from the lake. They surrounded Harry and Dumbledore, ready to attack. It was a horrifying sight. The dead, animated by dark magic, striving to capture the living. In the Harry Potter world, Inferi are not just zombies. They are the result of dark arts known as necromancy. Voldemort created all the Inferi himself, using the bodies of those he had killed. He turned them into his eternal servants. Creating Inferi requires an incredible level of dark magic. Voldemort was one of the few who possessed such knowledge and skills. He used them to create an army of the dead that could protect his horcruxes and spread terror. The Inferi fully obeyed their creator's will. They felt no pain, fear or doubt. This made them ideal guards for such important artifacts as horcruxes. Voldemort knew that only the bravest and most powerful wizard could handle them. In The Half-Blood Prince, the scene with the Inferi emphasizes Voldemort's cruelty and ruthlessness. He didn't just kill his victims, but also used their bodies for his purposes. This demonstrates how far he was willing to go to achieve his goal. Albus Dumbledore, one of the most powerful wizards, barely managed to cope with the Inferi. He used fire to drive them away and save Harry. This moment showed that even the most experienced wizards could be in danger when faced with such dark magic. The Inferi remain one of Voldemort's most sinister creations. They symbolize his disregard for human life and his willingness to use any opportunity to achieve immortality. Their creation is a vivid testament to his deep darkness and cruelty. 4. Albania became a significant place for Voldemort. Albania holds a special place in Voldemort's history. It was there that he found refuge during the darkest times of his life. In the forests of this country was hidden one of the greatest secrets of the magical world, the diadem of Helena Ravenclaw. Helena, daughter of Hogwarts founder Rowena Ravenclaw, fled to Albania, taking the diadem with her. This relic had incredible magical power. Many centuries later, Voldemort, in search of powerful artifacts to create horcruxes, found it. The diadem became one of his horcruxes, containing a part of his soul. After his first downfall at the hands of the infant Harry Potter, Voldemort fled to Albania. There he found a half-life existence hiding in the shadows. His spirit, weak and disembodied, could not return to the world of the living. Albania became his sanctuary, a place where he could recover and plan his return. The failure with the Philosopher's Stone only confirmed Albania's significance for Voldemort. When his plans to return to life using the stone were thwarted, he again found refuge in the Albanian forests. It was there that Peter Pettigrew found him after escaping his rat form. Pettigrew, desperately wanting to return to Voldemort's inner circle, helped his master. In one of the abandoned huts in Albania, they began restoring the Dark Lord's power. 
Gradually, with the help of ancient rituals and magical means, Voldemort regained his strength. The Albanian forests became not just a refuge for Voldemort. They became a symbol of his resurrection and resilience. Every time he was in danger, he returned there as to the source of his darkness and power. This period of his life was filled with patience and malice. Voldemort's return, after the failure with the Philosopher's Stone, was particularly ominous. Now, having Peter Pettigrew at his disposal, he could plan the next stage of his return. Albania, again, became his base from which he began his path to full restoration of power. This period in Voldemort's life shows how patient and calculating he was. He didn't rush. He knew his time would come. Albania became a symbol of his perseverance and willingness to wait as long as necessary to rise to the top again. 5. The Dark Lord's name has significant meaning. Few people think about why the name Voldemort sounds so ominous and terrifying. Tom Marvolo Riddle, like any child, didn't choose his name. His mother, Merope Gaunt, gave him this name in honour of his father and grandfather. Tom Riddle Sr. was an ordinary muggle who abandoned Merope when he learned about her magical abilities. This betrayal became the reason for Tom's hatred of muggles. When Tom Riddle decided to create a new name, he did it deliberately. Lord Voldemort is an anagram of Tom Marvolo Riddle. The Dark Lord himself said, I am Lord Voldemort. This name he chose to show his power and irresistible desire for immortality. In the book Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, it is through this anagram that Harry learns Voldemort's true name. The French translation of Voldemort's name hides even more secrets. Voldemort translates to flight from death. This perfectly reflects Tom Riddle's essence. From childhood, he feared death. This fear became his main motivator. He created Horcruxes to live forever, not fearing old age or death. Interestingly, in the French version of the books, the Dark Lord's name was changed. He was called Tom Elvis Jedusor. If you rearrange the letters in this name, you get Je suis Voldemort, I am Voldemort. This change was made to preserve the anagram in the translation. The anagram remained an important part of revealing his identity. In Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. It is through this anagram that French readers learn that Tom Riddle is Voldemort. Such attention to detail makes J.K. Rowling's work unique. She cared that even in translations, the meaning and mystery of her characters remained intact. Interestingly, for Voldemort, the name was not just a symbol of power. It was a tool through which he controlled fear. Mentioning his name instilled terror. After all, no one knew that behind it stood an ordinary person with his own fears and weaknesses. The name became a symbol of his desire for immortality and power. This fear of Voldemort's name is felt throughout the books. Even adult wizards avoided saying it. They called him He Who Must Not Be Named, or simply The Dark Lord. The fear of the name was so great that even after his fall, people couldn't freely pronounce it. 6. Voldemort's Bogart is his own death. A bogart is a surprising and sinister creature in the Harry Potter world. It takes the form of whatever the person fears the most. In the books, we see bogarts turn into various frightening images. For Ron Weasley, a bogart becomes a giant spider. For Neville Longbottom, it's Professor Snape. And for Harry Potter, it's a Dementor. The nature of a bogart lies in its ability to reveal a person's deepest fears. For each... This fear is unique. That is why a bogart can take the form of anything, whether it be a giant spider or a strict teacher. But what if Voldemort faced a bogart? J.K. Rowling revealed in an interview that Voldemort's bogart would take the form of his own dead body. This reveals a lot about the Dark Lord's inner world. Despite his powerful and fearless exterior, he feared death more than anything in the world. 
This fear of death was Voldemort's main motivator. He sought immortality at any cost, creating horcruxes, killing, and continuously searching for ways to extend life. All of this was dictated by his fear of ultimate defeat. He couldn't allow his life to end. Imagine Voldemort facing a boggart and seeing his own lifeless body before him. This sight would paralyze him with fear. After all, seeing his dead body would be an acknowledgement of his defeat, that all his efforts were in vain. This was what he feared the most. Voldemort's fear of death explains many of his actions. He was willing to do anything to avoid it. Even destroying his soul through the creation of Horcruxes seemed a lesser evil compared to ultimate death. In Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, we see how strongly he desires power and immortality to escape this fear. This fear makes Voldemort vulnerable. Despite all his power, he couldn't overcome his main fear. It is ironic that the most powerful dark wizard, who instilled terror in others' hearts, was himself paralyzed by the fear of death. This makes his character even more tragic and complex. The image of Voldemort's lifeless body is not just a fear of death. It is a fear of losing power, control, and eternal life. He couldn't accept the idea of his mortality. This would be an acknowledgement of his limitations and vulnerability. Voldemort strove to be more than human, but deep down remained a mortal fearing his end. Thus, Voldemort's fear of his own death emphasizes his human side. This makes him not just a villain, but a complex and multifaceted character. He sought immortality, but remained a prisoner of his fear. A boggart taking the form of his dead body is a vivid symbol of this inner struggle. 7. The Death Eaters had a different name. Death Eaters are a formidable and sinister group whose name evokes fear and dread. But few know that this group initially had a different name. Originally, Voldemort called his followers the Knights of Walpurgis. This name had its roots and significance. Knights of Walpurgis sounded aristocratic and impressive. This name referred to Walpurgis Knight, a time when, according to legend, witches and wizards gather for a Sabbath. Voldemort, striving to give his followers an aura of ancient mysticism and power, chose this name for a reason. However, the name Knights of Walpurgis didn't stick. It didn't inspire the fear that Voldemort sought. He understood that to create the desired effect, he needed a more sinister and terrifying name. The name had to reflect their goal and methods. It had to instill fear with its mere mention. Thus, the new name, Death Eaters, emerged. This name was much more direct and frightening. It reflected their pursuit of power and immortality, their readiness to do anything to achieve their goals. The name Death Eaters immediately began to evoke terror in the magical community. Death Eaters became a symbol of darkness and violence. Their name quickly spread and became synonymous with terror. Voldemort achieved his goal. Now people feared not only him, but also those who called themselves his followers. This name instilled fear and emphasized their ruthlessness. In Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Sirius Black tells Harry and his friends about the Death Eaters. He explains how dangerous and cruel they were. Their name became a symbol of hatred and cruelty. People were afraid even to mention them aloud. The name Death Eaters emphasized their goal, to defeat death and become immortal. Voldemort sought this at any cost, his followers shared his ambitions and were ready to do anything to achieve this goal. They devoured death, striving for eternal life. The effect of the new name on society was enormous. It became a symbol of fear and hatred. People began avoiding places where Death Eaters could appear. The war against them became even more horrific because fear amplified their power. Voldemort achieved his goal. His name and the name of his followers became synonymous with horror. Death Eaters, under such a sinister name, became part of the magical world's history. Their name, created by Voldemort, 
became a reminder of how powerful and dangerous words can be. This name will forever remain in the memory of those who survived the horrors of the war with Voldemort. Thank you for watching until the end. I hope this means you found it interesting, and if so, don't forget to like, share your opinion in the comments, and subscribe to the channel.